Hello guys, welcome to Drill's Point. Uh, in this in the last video we saw about intents. This video would be focusing on intent filters. So what are intent filters? You would have seen some predefined filters, something as Android underscore action underscore main in your in your Android manifest file. Yes, you got it right. Intent filters are the are the parts that are defined in the manifest file and are after uh, activity or any component for that matter. So as a word as a word defines or word describes, basically when we want to uh, filter our application by filtering, I mean when I want to give some additional properties or some additional requirements, some additional action to my application to my activity. At that point in time, I define up the intent filter. If you remember that we had used the intent as action underscore call in our application when we tried to call the a phone directly. We also use the send email option using the action underscore share. Or how so how all these things happen basically? This happens because of few parameters that we pass in the intent filter. So first let's see what is intent filter, what are the you know three what are the three uh, part, uh, three parts it can have and how can we have even our own intent filter created. At the end of this session we would be having a practical session in which we would be actually making our application fall in the fall in a category of a predefined intent filter that is action underscore dial. Each intent filter is defined by an intent filter element in the app's manifest file nested in the corresponding component. This component should always be nested in a uh, component like activity or service for that matter. Inside the intent filter, we can have three main elements, action, data, category. Action. It declares that the action that the application is accepting or the attribute it can be. You know, it's a normal string value. We can have uh, two or three actions, but we are uh, advised to add a new action tag for every time we are adding a new value to our new string to our action. Then is the data. Say what data is accepted, like say if, if it's a uh, uh, mail then we use the mail to data or the mail to URI. Now and, and the last one being the category. It declares the intent category accepted. It is also a name of the attribute. The value must be a string uh, must be a string value and not a class constant. Now uh, as you have seen that we define it uh, we define the action in such a way that we write it as action then Android name. And here we pass the action that we want to have. So now let's see how do we uh, how do we do it. So uh, we have to, so the first one being the action, we have to make sure that uh, there is an action because this list cannot be empty. There has to be as one action. Otherwise, it will block all intents. Remember, if your activity is not having any intent action filter in, in it, then it would block all the intents. If there are more than one actions, then we tried or the Android tries to match one of the like say if there are three, four action mentioned, like I want it to be a view also, I want it to be dialed also. At such point in time, I would I would have and try to match the maximum or the one or one other action should be matched. I maximum is preferred, but even if one matches, then it opens up the activity. Then the second one being the categories. In categories, like if there are no categories, then it then it's fine. But if there are more than one categories, then every category must match. In the action, even if one matches, the the action is taken up. But in the category, if there are no categories, it's fine. It will execute. But if there are if there are say more than one, then it has to match all the categories. And in the data being, uh, you know, we specify a URI like uh, like I we did uh, we did the tell like tell like this. Then we have mail to. These are having separate attributes for each part of the URI. An intent object uh, that contains both a URI and a data type passes the data type part of the test, but only if it matches the type listed in the filter. So we are actually having some predefined, uh, you know, predefined preset values. If our 
application is matching that value then we create the test then you create or clear the test and we are able to go to the phase wherein our application would be able to able to have our intent filter applicable now let's see how actually our intent filter would be looking like so this is my intent filter the first action being the view uh, if you remember we have action underscore view in which uh, we try to open the contract and thing like that so this comes as a part of that particular intent filter and the category being default so there is no additional category only the default category uh, in the demo that we would be doing we would be having the action as dial and view and the category would be browsable so why because we want the application to behave as a dialer for our own application or for any application that is trying to use a dialer so now let's see how do we create a project we open up the android studio create a new application name it as my application we create a different class that we want to have and then we create the main activity we modify the code over there in the xml files we are adding the layout which we want to add up or which we want to call here we are adding the intent filter for our own application like the custom activity that we want to invoke and we are done we just run the application and see the result so i think it's better if we quickly go to our android studio and see the way action underscore dial intent would be applicable to our application and we would be able to launch our activity whenever someone is trying to launch or fire the dialer yeah hello guys welcome back to tutorials point uh, we are in the middle of practical demo for the intent filter as we have already seen what intent filter is you know why do we need intent filter basically to inform or to see about the performance of an application what we would be doing we would be actually now adding an intent filter such that whenever the user presses the dialog he would be able to show our application or our activity in the suggestion so for that like see what I've done is I've taken up a this is my button what I'm doing on on click of this button I'm trying to launch the dialer action underscore dial right and this is the telephone number I am passing if I do it on a normal application the output would be the by default Android dialer, dialer application would open up now what we are trying to do is add our application to the dialer how we do that for that we go to the manifest file and here we need to add another intent filter in this filter we first write the action the name for this android action is android dot intent dot action dot view then we need another action the android dot intent dot action dot dial now i'm raising a category by category i mean that what all category my application should launch under I am giving it as Android dot intent dot category dot default. Then the category is the next category I'm giving is browsable. By browsable, I mean that uh, you know whenever it's whenever we want to launch some application, we need to provide that yes, uh, we won't do anything without the user interaction. The user is safe if he's in our application. The last point or the major point left is the data in which we tell which data schema or data data scheme we would be referring or which we would be able to process. So I say that I'm able to process any telephone number that comes. So when I run this application onto my phone. So here's my application on my phone and if the user will be clicking on the launch dialer he would be able to 
see my application in the recommendation. See, use a different app intent filter demo. I click on the intent filter demo, this application is coming up. Now, why this application is coming up? Because this is my by default activity underscore main and I have set it over here. So this is what I am seeing. Now, if the user will be clicking on this particular application at any point in time and he opens up dialer through anywhere, he would be able to see this option available to him. So I hope you have got a fair idea of these all are basically filters telling that you need to perform on the action dial then it is the default category and then it is saying that the yes the application is safe you won't do anything without the user interaction so when the user comes into your uh, application you can simply use the phone call feature the action underscore call feature and can call him directly from the number he has given to you in the uri right even we can use this number and can have an action in which we can simply launch up the phone call also using the action underscore call. So guys, I hope you would have got a fair idea of how uh, how we add intent filters to our application. Not only this, you can create your custom intent filters, wherein you know you can uh, like in spite of passing this intent filter, you can pass your own intent filter. But whenever you are launching, you have to give the reference to your filter that you have created over here because this is the reference to the intent that we have created. So thank you guys for tuning in. This was all from our side for the intent filter. Stay tuned as we'll be taking through the other Android concept in detail.